is going on? This is Altona, and today we are going to update or flash the internal ELRS module in my new Radio Master TX16S. Now, I am an absolute beginner when it comes to this particular radio, even though I've done some upgrades and whatnot to my older Jumper T18 in the past. I have some idea on how these things work, but I've never flashed the internal module, not even my 401 module in the T18 before. So this one's Express LRS. I'm new to Express LRS. We're going to go through the update. And we're going to make this very simple because I really want you to understand as a beginner, if you decide or choose to get this particular radio, it's really not as intimidating as you might think it is, even for a beginner. Let's go ahead and jump into this so you can see what we have going on here. So first of all, the current version that was shipped in this radio for the internal module is 3.0.1. And the current version as of this video is 3.3.2. So of course, if you're buying a brand new Radio Master TX16S, it's a good possibility that you might want to go ahead and update the internal module on your radio. So we're gonna turn the radio on and then plug in our USB-C connector on the top of the radio. And once you do that, you're gonna have your three selections and you're gonna select USB serial VCP rather than USB-C. And then that's going to essentially allow your radio to be able to receive the, the flash information. So that's pretty much all we're gonna do on the radio itself. Now we're gonna go over to computer and we're gonna start by going to the Express LRS GitHub and finding the newest release. And so let's go ahead and do that. So when you go there, you're gonna scroll down the page, you're gonna notice on the right-hand side, you, it should give you the latest version of the configurator. And if you go down the list, there's a bunch of different ones that you can choose, but since I'm on a Mac, I'm gonna choose the D mg version but um, there is also a block map version for a beginner that's not something that you need to be concerned about so you can just ignore that just go ahead and get the exe or the dmg version that you need if you're on most of you are probably on pc some of you may be on mac so next you'll just run the installer for me the installer runs pretty easily essentially once i double click to run the installer it basically opens up a screen with the application on it and my application folder i just drag it over to my application folder and it's and it's there one of the things that i'm going to do is create a, a shortcut so that i can get to it very easily it's up to you whether you want to put a shortcut icon as long as you know where the application is stored you can get to it now you're going to open up the configurator. Now opening up the configurator again can be interesting on a Mac. Just go through the steps that are necessary in order to open up if you do have those issues. And then we're going to go ahead and start setting up in order for it to basically build out the flash firmware for our specific radio. Now at the top you're going to see your releases. Now I would leave the un uh, I would leave the pre-releases unchecked or take the check out of them before you look at the drop down. Just go to the most recent number and in our case is 3.3.2 and then we're gonna go ahead and select that. Now go down to target and you're gonna find your correct target. Mine currently is Radio Master 2.4 gigahertz. Then choose the correct device. Uh, mine, if you look down the list here is Radio Master TX16S internal 2.4 TX. Now, let me tell you something really quickly before we go any further. It is a very good possibility that these names may change. It should be pretty easy for you to figure out which one is the correct one as new versions come out in the future. But even if you're just watching this video, you should be pretty familiar with what you're looking for. You shouldn't have a problem trying to figure that out. So for flashing method, you have a couple of options there. We're gonna choose Edge TX Pass-Through because we're actually USB connected to our radio. And next, of course, you see the button there to download your Lua script. If you haven't done so already, make sure you just go ahead and click on it and download it. I actually already had it downloaded, so it gave me a message. I let it overwrite. So I just to be sure I have the, the most recent version, and then we, we're gonna con just continue on from there. Just keep in mind that once you once we finish flashing the internal module, what we're going to want to do is go into the scripts and tools folder in the firmware folder on your radio and 
drop in that Lua script so we have the most recent version. Next, we're going to select standard mode. And then for the regulatory domain, for me, it's going to be ISM 2400 because we are located in the US. If you're in the EU, then you'll use EU. You should have a good idea of which one is the proper one for you to use. Check binding phrase and put in your selected binding phrase. And what you'll notice here is there's a little eyeball on the side. Once you put your binding phrase in, you can choose to view or uh, that binding phrase to make sure that it, that you did type it in correctly. But I, I would actually view it and make sure you did type it in correctly just to verify once you do once you do so the the tlm report interval you can just leave that unchecked now if you want to you can set your home wi-fi i'm actually setting my home wi-fi so that it will my internal module will actually connect to my home wi-fi because in the future you can actually update through wi-fi if you so desire now check the auto wi-fi on interval at default is set to 60 but i actually set mine to 120 just because I don't mind giving it two minutes before it actually tries to connect to Wi-Fi. Now next, under actions, make sure you choose the correct device. For me, it was pretty easy because it does say Edge TX in the name, so that worked out great for me. I only have three different devices, serial devices actually connected to my machine. But if you're not sure which one it is, you can disconnect your radio and it will disappear from the list. And then when you reconnect it, then make sure you choose serial again on your main screen and, and it should show back up so you'll know which one to select. If you're having problems with that, you may need to download an STM driver. And I'll make sure that I put the link for that down in the description. I actually already have an STM driver on my machine, which I uploaded a long time ago because I was using it configuring Betaflight on some of my FPV drones. There's a couple of other selections at the bottom. I don't think you need to worry about those, at least not for now. If you decide that you want to try to use them later, you can, but make sure you read up on them before you do. But at this point, all we have to do is, cl is click build and flash. And it's going to take a little bit of time for it to actually build out the firmware based on the device that we're flashing and then start uploading that firmware to your radio. You do not want to turn the radio off or disconnect the radio during this process, because if you do, it you could possibly brick, brick the radio and then you're going to have some issues in trying to get your radio back working again. It's not going to kill the radio. It will still work, but it's not going to function properly until you get this updated. And then, of course, once it's completed, you should see success on the screen. Now, you also notice that there's another reminder to download the Lua script. If you haven't done so already, here you have another opportunity to do so. At this point, I would disconnect your radio and then reconnect it and then choose USB, USB storage. That way you, you can get your storage back up on your screen and then go ahead and drop your Lua script into the correct folder so that it is updated. It will need to overwrite the current one if it is already there. I noticed that I had it there already, so I just let, allow it to overwrite. Once that's completed, you can disconnect from your radio, hit the sys button, and then go back to your Express LRS, and it is going to show you at the bottom, you now have 3.3.2. So that's it, we're, we're completely done. It worked out great. We've got this guy updated and soon we're gonna be binding the receivers to it using the same binding phrase. We're also gonna flash the module in each one of the receivers so that they have the exact same binding phrase and from that point we're, we are good to go so i hope that this has helped you out in some way i really appreciate it again this is for for beginners if you happen to be uh, somewhat seasoned with this radio and express lrs and you see questions in the comment section that you know the answer to i welcome you to answer those questions respectfully <laughs> so thank you so much for coming by and hanging out with me today i hope that this has been at least educational to you in some way <laughs> thanks again i look forward to seeing you again very soon take care